All right, let's just get right into it. My initial thoughts with the series ending today is that X-Men 97 has surpassed any expectations I had of it going in. I'll get more into specifics in a bit, but to be fair, the bar was pretty low seeing as how Disney has been desperately trying to bury the X-Men for years since they didn't have the movie rights. But now that they have the movie rights back, all bets are off. But that's neither here or there though, really. I'm not really gonna go episode by episode for this review, I'll just focus on stuff like characters, plot, tone, and what we can expect in the future and whatever else I can think of. My overall experience with the show is honestly a positive one, which I wasn't really expecting going in because Marvel's What If series is pretty subpar, if I'm being honest. Let's just get this out of the way. The intro theme is impeccable, and whoever made that for the original series back in 1992 deserves all the royalties they can get. That is an intro you don't skip, it is always a banger. Let's get this review kicking with something simple, the characters. Some characters did stand out like Cyclops, Storm, and Gambit are possibly at the best they've ever been, especially Gambit who has been sorely missed from not being in Fox's X-Men films. As for the rest, they were good depictions for the most part. Like Jean Grey was likable, the clone angle was kind of stupid though, but that's a comic book story plot. It's kind of rendered moot because the clone just dies off anyway, so like it didn't really matter in the end. I've never been the biggest fan of Beast, but he's there same as always. Nightcrawler was fine, his powers are cool but his character was just generic good man template. Nothing really new or dynamic about him in this series. Forge and Bishop were barely in the series, so much for diversity, right Disney? There was also a lot of controversy over the character of Sunspot, I will not get into that here because I think his overall character was bad regardless of what race they made him. I thought this character was a throwaway character in the first episode of the show, and to my surprise, he wasn't. Him and Jubilee were probably some of the worst characters in the show, and to me that's like how do you make me dislike Jubilee? By making her obnoxious, self-centered, and arrogant, that's how. Both her and Sunspot brought nothing to this show, you could take them out and nothing would change. Cable I think personally was better adapted in Deadpool 2, he's okay here. Nothing to write home about though. Wolverine was a big miss for me, he wasn't likable, and I wish they would just stop the stupid love triangle with him, Cyclops and Jean Grey. That was one of the worst plot lines of this show, other than the clone thing. And Jean Grey and Cyclops have a child together and are married, let it go Wolverine, it's been over. The worst character in the show for me, and this might be my hottest take yet, is Morph, hands down. He brought absolutely nothing to the show, nothing. Not funny, not charismatic, not entertaining. His power is just transforming into other, better characters for a cameo, and then immediately getting knocked out afterwards. I was thinking like why not just cameo other, better characters in the episodes instead of having a cheap morph cameo, and then they actually did that in the last two episodes so why bother with morph? He wasn't even integral to the Sinister plotline because Jean Grey ultimately destroyed Sinister. He's just an empty vessel of a character. His role should have gone to characters like Kitty Pride, the Scarlet Witch, Psylocke or literally anyone else. Also this might be one of the first times where I genuinely haven't enjoyed either Magneto or Professor Xavier's storylines or characters. Honestly Cyclops kind of stole the show as the leader of the X-Men, I wish they had just stuck to that for the entire 10 episodes. I think this is where the movies did such better adaptations of the characters, that here they don't look as good in comparison. Just having Storm and Cyclops be the leaders, then having Bastion be the main villain would have been a hundred times better than hearing about Magneto's backstory again. We get it. He went through hell as a child and is scorned, you don't have to tell us that in every goddamn episode. Every fucking time he's in a scene, it's I come from a time when people were persecuted, like we get it dude. And Professor Xavier is just stupid in this adaptation. I wish they didn't even bother bringing him back. This marks maybe one of the first times where I would roll my eyes whenever he had dialogue in a scene. He's just so pretentious, he comes off annoying more than anything. Both these characters are tired. And honestly, I would have respected this show a whole lot more if they had actually killed Magneto off in episode 5, not only would that have been a symbolic end to the character, but it would have shown that this show had guts to do something different. But no, we have to go on and on about how tortured and how much of a sad sack Magneto is. I'm sick of both of them. Apparently the movies aren't going to focus on these characters and you know what, good for the movies. There's more villains and leaders in the X-Men comics, and it's about time to change things up. I didn't even mention Rogue, this is maybe the worst adaptation I've ever seen of the character. Maybe even worse than the movies since she's barely in them. They destroyed Rogue, I'm sorry. Like she's powerful and shit and that's good and all, but she straight up murders a guy. 
Every decision she makes is questionable, and in this adaptation she hooks up with Magneto. Now I'm gonna say this outright, I don't know how far they've gone with that in the comics, if at all. I looked it up and apparently they did hook up a few times, but that was really it. None of the romance in this show hits. They had something with Rogue and Gambit, they should've just stuck to that, instead of having her cheat on Gambit with Magneto. It's all over the place, this show is messy as hell in the relationship dynamics, and it's hard to look past it because they constantly bring it up every episode. I never thought the grunge goth teenager Rogue would be a better adaptation of her from X-Men Evolutions, but here we are. Also, maybe a series first for X-Men, but there were no cameos by either Mystique or Sabretooth. Morph did turn into him in one scene which was annoying, but either character did not have an actual scene in the show. Which is funny because they're both in the intro. I think most of the villains in the intro, other than Emma Frost and Magneto obviously, were not in the show, but I digress. The villains were fine, but they were mostly overshadowed by Magneto and his baggage, which is why Magneto's story should have ended in episode 5 in my opinion. It's hard to focus on new villains and new lore when you have to keep regurgitating all the old stuff, constantly. As for the voice acting, it's decent. Probably a hot take but other than Gambit or Storm, I wouldn't have minded if they would have gone with a different voice cast. I am in the minority on this aspect of the show however because I think most of the reception to the voice work is received positively. I don't know if I'm just being overtly cynical or what, but I do think the voice work is serviceable. Also I don't understand why Captain America wouldn't have fought with the X-Men, I don't know why they made him the government's lapdog in this show. It seemed kind of out of character. Especially when he had a whole comic and movie explicitly fighting against the government called Civil War. As for the plot, there was a lot going on. The 10 episode format did not fit everything they were trying to convey. This show would have really benefited being 15 to 20 episodes long, but I understand that this was just a test run for Disney to see if people even still care about the X-Men, which obviously they do. Overall plot of the show was decent, but there were too many stories going on, and that affected the tone of the show because tonally it was all over the place. The pacing was kind of bad for example in episode 3, you have one story arc where Jubilee is learning a life lesson in a video game. Then it hard cuts to Storm being alone with Forge in the mountains feeling sorry for herself. It's inconsistent, and I believe that is just from the show only being 10 episodes long so they had to dump everything they could in each episode. But when you watch it it can be confusing or even jarring. With that being said, I was watching every episode weekly. The stories they were telling are good for the most part, I just think the episodes are either too short and should be longer, or that there should be more episodes in general. Either way, I was left wanting more each week. That would probably also help with the tone and pacing issues I was having with the show as well. I gotta bring this up real quick, my initial reaction to the show when I first watched the trailer was that it was animated pretty badly. I don't know how I feel about that now because some fight scenes in this show do look pretty good, but other than that most of the show feels very stiff. You do kind of get used to the style of animation the more you watch it, it does grow on you, so that's why I'm conflicted. It looks like most of the budget went into the fight scenes for the show especially episode 8. I hope that for the seasons to come because this show was greenlit for a second season, that Disney pumps more money into this show. I want to real quickly brush up on all the cameos in this show like with Iron Man, Spider-Man, Cloak and Dagger, or whoever, I don't personally care about any of them. It was kind of cool seeing Spider-Man but he's everywhere so it's not that big of a deal. I don't care about the cameos which was probably why I hated Morph so much. It's just a big nothing burger, like hey look it's a character you like for 5 seconds, wow. I haven't really been avoiding spoilers for this review but what we can expect in the future is the apocalypse storyline. We'll see where that goes I guess but I don't have anything more to say on that. Overall the show is pretty good. If you're new to X-Men, I would say maybe just brush up on some lore, like learn who the cast is on Wikipedia or something like that. Then start watching because you're not gonna know what the hell is happening when you start the show. Even at that, there was some stuff I had to look up after I watched an episode, the showrunners went for some deep cuts for this series. I kind of wish this show had a prologue or something just explaining everything that had happened so far. It would have been a little helpful. I think this show does have some problems, but it's entertaining for the most part. Last thing I just remembered, if you're not a fan of Force sentimentality I would recommend not watching this show at all. There is at least one scene in every episode where they try to make you cry and it worked on me every time. But that's more because I don't know if it's that I'm getting older or what, but I'm the type of person who when they see a sad scene in a movie, even if it's a movie I'm not into, I will cry. So I do recommend watching this series even if I do feel the 10 episode format worked against it.
This show exemplifies why the X-Men have a dominant presence in the world of comic book shows and movies. I do have some nitpicks, but overall it's pretty decent for what it is. Also, it's only 10 episodes long, it's not too much of a burden to watch this thing in one sitting or just watching an episode a day. I look forward to seeing what Disney does with the X-Men in the future.